Aaron Sutliff creates site-specific and time-based work using plants, flowers, and digital media. Based in DC, Aaron is the owner of Tint Floral, which focuses on design for weddings and events. If informed by the season, she relies on local growers and nurseries for blooms and foliage. Over to you, Erin. Hello, everyone. Thanks for everyone who's saying good morning in the chat right now. Um, good morning, good afternoon, whatever, whatever this is for you. I'm excited for today's class. Um, I feel like floral adhesive kind of, I don't know, gets overlooked. Everyone wants to do arrangements all the time, which is amazing. But I think floral adhesive has a lot of, um, it's just pretty versatile. You can use it in a lot of ways and it'll allow your practice to be way more creative. And especially if you are doing events and wedding work, it's like, it's essential. It's not so essential in like a personal practice, but I do think it, it'll make your work kind of stand out if you have this tool in your toolkit. So um, is, Elizabeth, do you wanna do the, is anyone following a long poll? Or I can just ask and they can respond. Yeah, absolutely. I'll curious. go ahead and activate the poll right now. Okay, cool. I know probably not everyone is signed in yet, but I'm curious to see if people are following along. So folks, go ahead and navigate over to the poll tab and let us know, are you creating a wearable floral along with Erin during the program today, or are you learning lessons that you plan to use in the future? Okay, so we're at about uh, six, uh, six folks say they're learning for the future and two folks are working along with you today. Okay, sweet. Um, I'm glad we have at least a couple people who are working along. I, and if you're not working along, I recommend that you try to apply this stuff because then it'll really like get engraved inside of your brain. Um, what we're gonna be focusing today is for, on floral adhesive and this is cold glue. So usually in the flower industry, if you just hear people say floral glue, this is what um, they're talking about. And it's different than hot glue. Obviously, it doesn't need to be plugged in. It doesn't have heat. It's just cold. And I actually like it a lot better because it doesn't tend to peel as much. Where cold, um, with hot glue, at least in my experience, I feel like sometimes I'll use it and it can either damage the flowers because it's hot um, or it can kind of pull away from a piece over time. Maybe I'm just not great at hot glue, but I've, I've always just preferred floral adhesive. So I'm gonna start by doing a demo um, and I'll go over some best practices with the glue and then we're gonna move on into different ways you can apply it. Do you guys have a preference? So for those of you working at home, I think you have ribbon and you have, um, I also have a cuff. Both, it's the same technique. Do you have a preference of me demoing on the cuff or on the ribbon? Any preference? Ribbon, okay, because a couple of you are doing ribbon. So I'll do it on the ribbon and just know, maybe I'll have time for a demo on the cuff as well. And if not, it's the same exact technique and we'll go over it like different ways to apply this. So. Um, the reason I recommended to get the ribbon is just because it is more accessible. Usually everyone kind of has a roll of ribbon around. So usually what I do is I make it a little bit longer because I can always trim it down afterwards. So let's say I'm making a wrist cuff, for example. Um, I'll measure it here. And I always use fabric scissors with ribbon. They just cut way cleaner and if you're a fabric person or a sewing person, you know to not let anyone use your fabric scissors for anything else. I like hide them when I go to events because I'm afraid people are gonna use them to cut a stem really quickly or do something and it really can ruin them. And so try to use your fabric scissors only with fabric. So I'm gonna cut a long piece like this. Um, right now, I'll just go ahead and actually angle these sides just because I may cut it down later but for now just in case I don't I think, I think this angle looks a lot nicer than the straight edge looks a little squatty to me so I'm just going to cut a steep angle on this ribbon
Okay, and you can use the glue directly on the ribbon, but usually it just kind of, you can feel the flowers through it and I don't necessarily like that feel. And you can feel the glue underneath it on your wrist and it might feel kind of bumpy. So usually I like to take something, you can either use a piece of like a business card. This is um, a piece of poster paper. And what you would do is you would just cut this down into a circle, like the size that you would want on your wrist, maybe like this large, and you would glue that first onto the ribbon. Um, you can also use felt, which is what I'm going to use today. I thought, I think I recommended to you all to get the card stock or the business tape, business card, just because it's something that you have in your house. It could even just be a piece of regular printer paper, just to kind of make it smooth. Uh, I have this felt, so I'm going to use that. You can see where I've cut out these circles in the past. Um, so, I guess they're more like ovals, but you could also do a circle, really whatever shape works. And this isn't going to be seen, so it doesn't have to be perfect. I kind of like to make it as neat as possible just to have a clean product, but it's it will be covered up, this piece of felt or this card, whatever you're going to be using. So roughly, this is what I'm going to put on mine. It fits on my wrist like that. You could always do it this way as well. So my ribbon is actually um, kind of thick. And so I could either do it this way or I could do it on an angle and have the flowers kind of go more like this, which is actually, I think, what I might do for this piece. I could have also just made this way bigger. So it's really just a style preference. Um, if I were doing this on a cuff, it would be the same thing. I would just take this felt and place it on here and glue it onto here. And you'll notice with the cuff, like, the reasoning is different. So obviously if I put the cuff on and I glue directly onto it, you're not feeling that bumpiness underneath the cuff, but floral adhesive like doesn't really like metal. It doesn't really like um, things that are non-porous. And so there's a chance if you start gluing directly onto this, you get that dreaded like peel where halfway through the event, something might kind of peel off. And so just to be completely confident, I know a lot of times it doesn't and it'll be totally fine, but to be fully confident because I don't want something to break down in the middle of an event, I always put a piece of felt or card or full leather or anything that is a little bit more porous on here first, and then I'll start gluing onto that. So we'll come back to, I'll do it on the ribbon. So roughly in the middle, I'll take my felt. And with floral glue, I'm going to continue to refer to it as floral glue. But again, like if you're looking this up online, you'll find it easier if you look up floral adhesive. Um, you don't need a lot for this part. For adding it to the ribbon, you only just need a little bit. So I'm taking it and I'm kind of just drawing across little dashes. And then I'm placing that, I'm going to do an angle. I'm placing that like that on my ribbon. And you don't really have to wait for this to dry. Um, I don't know if anyone experienced this when they were trying to purchase uh, the floral adhesive, but there is there's a supply chain issue just in the States right now and probably all over us and we're still kind of dealing with the effects of 2020. And there is actually a floral adhesive shortage. And so lately I've had to use more of like a super glue for events and it's like, it's not nearly as good. I just wanted to say that I have used it and it will work. But the thing with 
the more like craft glues or the super glues, like they take a while to dry and you kind of have to wait a long time in between steps. The nice thing about floral adhesive is like you can kind of move on to the next step right away. When you're dealing with the flowers, you usually want to wait like 10 to 15 seconds so it gets like tacky and will stick. Um, but for the most part, it's a it's a really quick process. So if you're doing something, you're trying to get it done fast, there's not a lot of waiting period, which is one of the reasons I really like it. Um, so now I'm going to come in. I'm just going to choose. So I have all these flowers over here. I also brought um, a couple plants that I have. I have this house plant. This is a type of begonia. And while like I, I don't need nearly as much as, as what's here. I'm just like, I might use just one leaf because I think it's a really pretty texture. And so the plants that you can use for this, they don't just have to be traditional cut flowers. Um, and honestly, with the hydration method that we're going to learn at the end of class, most things will work. Things that might not even hydrate well normally, like the way we're going to hydrate this, most plant materials will work, even things that tend to droop out of water. I know people are often really nervous about using things as a boutonniere or as a wrist corsage that don't last well out of water. But if you do a hydration method, the way that we're gonna discuss at the end of class, I believe that most products will work. If you're really nervous and this is for an event and like you may wanna just test it first, um, but yeah, I would say most plant material can work for this. I also have this, um, Elizabeth can tell me if I'm pronouncing it right. I think it's a hookara. It's also got it. Hookara. Okay. So this, I brought this, this is like, um, I love this plant so much. These leaves are way too big. I actually use these leaves in arrangements sometimes, but if I dig kind of deep into the plant, there's some small baby ones and let's see. So like this one is so tiny and cute and kind of goes with this palette. I have some peppers here. These are more so ornamental peppers. I don't think you can eat these. A florist did grow these. I mean, a flower grower did grow these. But I have this, um, my little hookah leaf, some pepper plants. Right now, um, this is a perennial, which I absolutely love. I'll show you the full stem just so you can see it. But this is a toad lily. And I just think they're so cool. They're like polka dotted and like they're, the texture is just so interesting. And so I'm gonna cut off a teeny toad lily. You can see I'm kind of like working this mauve palette um you don't have to stick with like you can get totally wild i could pull i could pull different colors in here it's kind of whatever you want i'll start with this so we can get going but as you see most of these are small things it's kind of hard to work with a big flower so i have this carnation here as example if i put this on my wrist this is like the whole corsage so it's not super textured there's not a ton of movement to it but something that you can do if you have larger flowers, like even this coxcomb, for example, um, I this is ridiculous. I mean, that's actually like, I'm looking at it, it's actually very cool, but this is not the look I'm going for. It's just like one red ball on my wrist. So what you can do with these bigger flowers is you can kind of take them apart. Um, so I could maybe just cut off I'm not using red in my palette, but just to give you an example, I can cut into this and now I have this like nice little piece. And so we're looking for small textured things, but if you only have like really big flowers in your garden right now, or um, like you can always break it down. Same thing with the carnation. So this carnation, not gonna look great, but something I can do is just take all these petals out. And so now I have all of these pieces. And this could work really well as like a fun textured piece. Like I can just take a couple pieces and use it here. And it, it's like nice and airy and light and it's not this huge flower. So just a little bit about breaking down material. Um, 
So you always want to glue onto the thing that you're gluing onto. So what I mean is like, if I were using this cuff and I had the felt on top of it, I would glue, be, glue on both the cuff and glue onto the flower. And so even with this, I'm going to put glue, and I'll show you. I'm gonna first put glue on top of this felt oval that I made. Um, and okay, so that's a bad example. I purposely brought this cup in here because one of the best practices for floral glue is to always put the cap on when you're not using it. And then also to have it be upright. If it's sideways, likely glue will kind of seep into the cap. And the worst thing is like not being able to get the cap off. The glue is very, very strong. You can always come in with like, um, pliers or something to get it off if you really need to but if if you're kind of diligent about just keeping it upright and keeping the lid clean it'll be helpful if some of you are new to this and you just got a brand new thing of floral adhesive and you're using it and you're like okay this is this is very hard to control with your hand i would say the new when it's a new bottle um it kind of it is hard, it wants to come out really quickly. And like, it's just a muscle memory thing. You'll just get better with time. So don't feel like you're losing control. Like even I do it with new bottles and even this sometimes, like if you squeeze too much, you can get a ton. And it's just kind of, as you practice, you'll get a lot better. So I put this on here and now I usually start with my largest thing. I know some people start with their smallest thing and they kind of work in. I like to get the largest thing that I have kind of on and in place. Um, in this case, I think it would be the peppers. And so, I am putting, glue on here and like I said I've already put glue here I don't really need to put more if you feel like it's totally dry that's fine um I'm gonna glue a couple of my pieces like I said it, it likes to get tacky if I were just put this on now it might want to fall off it'll get tacky in about 10 seconds 10 seconds is not a ton of time so sometimes I'll just kind of stick it right on and that's fine but um, with this piece of toad lily, it has a little bit of a stem. If I were using this later, the stem would be fine, but I think it'd be hard to glue it on with the stem as is if I'm putting it right flush up against the ribbon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this stem completely off so it's like a nice flat surface. So this is a little bit tacky now. So I'm going to add this on. I'm kind of having this spill over the side a little bit. And I usually just hold it in place. Um, I, did, I forgot to do this, but I mean, this, this amaranthus stem will work. I don't like to get my hands gluey. I know there are people who um, will put lotion on their hands first, and then if, they get, if your hand gets gluey, then it's a lot easier to get off. Um, if you put lotion on your hands and then you get the glue on them and then it, it just washes off a lot easier. I'm just not interested in the glue on my hands at all. So if I feel like I can get a good piece that's not gluey and press it down and hold for a little bit, I will. If it feels a little too risky, um, I don't like the feeling of this on my hands. I'll just take another stem and I'll just push it down for a little bit until I feel like it's good to go. And then I'm going to come in with my toad lily. And I'm putting about a pea size of glue. So while I said you don't need a lot of glue to put the felt or the piece of cardboard, whatever you're using onto either the ribbon or the cuff or whatever your blank is, um, I do use quite a bit of glue on these flowers, like a pea size amount. I want this one to kind of sit up again, like 
kind of hard for me to get my fingers in there without getting glue on them. So I'll find a little stem and just use that to kind of hold it down. I know some people who kind of um, glue all of their pieces and kind of have them all ready and they can apply all at once. I, I feel like I never really know where I'm going with it that early. So I don't like to necessarily glue too many things unless I'm really certain of the design. So I end up making a lot of changes. Um, so I so I oftentimes just kind of glue as I go. I actually really like this carnation, but it kind of makes it a little too soft for me. So I'm gonna use one of, I have some ageratum. Yeah, this is a really interesting, I don't know if y'all are familiar with ageratum, but usually it comes in like a much lighter purple. This is the first time I've seen it in this color. It's like kind of this um, plum color. It's absolutely gorgeous. And this is a scabiosa. Again, both that work really well with the palette. So scabiosa is pretty big and I'm just deciding to use it. So I'm gonna get that in before I don't have space for it. I don't love all the green around it. So I'm gonna clip that off. So again, I just have, I've taken the stem fully off so it's really easy to place. Using about a pea size of glue. Cap back on in an upright container. I'll show you what it looks like so far so you're not totally in the dark. This is what I have so far. And it's already kind of sticking. Like I'm telling you, if I were using like a super glue or a craft glue, me lifting that up after just placing that scabiosa, it would have wanted to slip right off. Um, so I do, I do really love the floral adhesive. I am going to save this piece. This is a side bud from the toad lily. And I think this is like going to be a really cool piece to kind of float above it. I don't love for everything to just be like flat on your wrist. So if you can add anything that kind of gives it a little bit of height, like these flowers from the hoot girl would be really perfect. Um, this viburnum, I think this is viburnum. It's, it maybe, I think it's nine bark, but it's, um, it's a type of viburnum. Hopefully I have that right. But this, like this end piece could kind of float above, like anything that can kind of float above. So it's not just this flat piece on your wrist. Um, I think it gives it a lot of nice interest. I also got this nice piece of jewel of opar, which again, could just be a little bit of texture added in at the end. I'm gonna come in and do put a little bit of ageratum on the sides. Um, you can try, I've seen people put glue in a little, in a little cup so they can kind of dip in as they go. I find, for me at least, the, in doing that, I find that I end up wasting a lot of the glue. It just doesn't really work well for the, the workflow that I do, but I've seen people do it and do it successfully, so I just wanted to let you know. So if you continue to make these, you can kind of test out some things on your own and know that there are professionals that certainly use, they, they put the glue in a little bowl or something and they'll kind of dip as they go. I also don't have many like bowls lying around that I want to have this glue in them. So that could be like another reason I'm not super fond of that method. Um, I have this nice heirloom mum, which like, again, this is like, these are, these are really big pieces. So either I can use the side bud like this, or I can take just a few of these petals and kind of incorporate. I think I'm gonna do that. I kind of like that. Give it some height and some interest. 
So after the ageratum, that's what we're looking like. That was just stems, by the way. So I just saw some things fall, but it was just like some stems I had cut off. Um, you'll notice that I didn't put the, oh, thank you, Elizabeth saying nine bark is physocarpus. Physo, okay, so it's physocarpus, it's not, it's not a type of viburnum. Um, thank you, thank you, Botanic Gardens for correcting me. Um, you'll notice that I didn't put a leaf under there first. So I see a lot of people make wrist corsages where they start because they want to cover up that base. Um, so they'll start by putting a big leaf underneath it. And personally, I kind of think that that's just a little bit risky because let's say one thing does fall off. I don't think anything's going to fall off in doing it this way. I think you're good to go. But if something does fall off and it happens to be that one leaf that you put on the bottom, then your whole piece is gone. And so I really don't like doing that. Um, so I usually add the greens in. If I am using greens, I kind of add those in after. So I'm gonna to start to kind of give it a little bit of height here. So instead of putting this flat like this, I'm gonna to try to place it on the side a little bit so, it's, so it comes up. And when you are trying to give things like the shape that isn't natural, you may have to hold it a little bit longer until it is like good and tacky. Oh, this is my, this is a perfect stem. This is from my, um, my scabiosa. Also feel free to like cut leaves down. So um, sometimes leaves are just too big, but you want to leave one like a eucalyptus leaf, for example, it's um, the willow leaves are kind of long and big. And if it feels just too big, but you think the color will really add something nice to your palette, um, just cut it down. Like you can just literally take the leaf and make it smaller. And so if something does feel too big, this is kind of the same idea as us like breaking down the flowers. Like you can definitely just cut down leaves. Erin, it seems like you are designing this as you go, really incorporating different pieces of the floral and foliage material. Do you ever map them out beforehand or is this your general design practice? I normally don't because, so usually when I'm doing this stuff, it's kind of with like bits and bobs. Um, like usually you don't, like if you're doing an event or something, you usually don't have to purchase more flowers for the, I mean, maybe sometimes for the boutonnieres, depending on the flower, but usually you're using like side pieces and like small bits and bobs from what you already have. So I usually don't have like a perfect plan. I'm kind of just like taking the bits and bobs from the palette that I'm already working in and then kind of building out from there. And then you also really do just kind of like you see what it needs as you go. So I'll, I'll show you, I just, I just added this. Um, this might not be super stuck yet. So I just added this light colored side bud from the mom because I felt like it was all dark and it needed a little bit of contrast. Like I, I usually in choosing this stuff, it was all roughly the same palette. So there was that in the planning, but when it comes to actually like mapping the whole thing out, I usually just start with the biggest material um, and then try to add the small material last. So that's more of the process versus like actually having a full plan for it.
Um, let's see, I want to start to give it some height. So let me show you on my wrist what it looks like for now. Honestly, I like I like it as is right now. I think it's really nice, but I do feel like um, I want to give a little bit of height in a certain in a couple of places. Um, so I'm going to come in with like these more floaty elements that I feel like would kind of um, float above, like I mentioned, maybe these hookra flowers or where did that bud go? There was that really pretty. Uh, so many tiny things in front of me. There was that really pretty side bud from the, well, I, there's more, so I'll just cut another one, maybe it fell. Um, these side buds from the toad lily, I think are so pretty. This one actually has a flower that's almost open too, so I like that. No, I said, someone said, I didn't put the side bud in. I put the side bud in of the mom, of the heirloom mom, but not the, oh, there's the, I found it. I think I, if you're starting to build up, and maybe where you're placing your stems that are kind of floating above, um, if that seems to be in a spot that um, doesn't have glue, like we talked about putting glue onto bold things. So putting glue onto the placement and then putting glue onto the thing that you're placing. And so if you're starting to build up and you feel like you're, there isn't glue where you're placing something, make sure to go ahead and add a little bit of glue onto the piece and then stick what you're placing. I'm still kind of finding, I'm still able to kind of find the base that does have that porous surface and has a little bit of glue. So I don't need to do that yet, but it is something worth noting. I really like, I, I would love to get a little bit more height. I don't know how these are gonna, these were kind of on the back of the mumps. They don't seem like they're in the best shape. I'm gonna try to add a couple of them to see if they work. And I'm, I'm basically for this, I'm going for like a really textured piece, but the same thing goes, like sometimes I'll do freelance work for other florists and the design is more mapped out. So the design is like each, each wrist corsage is getting like one ranunculus, one piece of greenery, one this, and it's like, it's very mapped out and you can do the same. Yeah, I don't love, I don't love this. I'm gonna take that out. Um, you can do the same thing with a more recipe piece if you don't want it to be like super textured. So this is what I'm at right now. I think I'm kind of happy with it. Everything's covered. I might add a little bit more in this area here. It kind of feels like a hole. Maybe add something a little bit lighter just because it is so dark. So to give a little bit of lightness, lightness as in like height, but lightness also in color to the center. I feel like that could give it a little more interest. Um, but yeah, so sometimes it's as simple as like each, each wrist corsage gets like one ranunculus and three pieces of greenery. And that would be like a very recipe thing. I like to kind of work with these little side pieces because I just think it ends up being super interesting. And usually if I'm working for an event, I don't promise specific flowers in, um, in the boutonnieres or the wrist corsages or any sort of wearable because I basically just say in the proposal that it's going to like work towards the overall aesthetics of the design. So in doing so, I'm like using all these bits and bobs and I think it ends up using being way nicer because I'm able to make a super textured piece. Whereas like if I went into it and I had 
three flowers that I was made to use, it might, it, it'll work and it'll be what the client expected, but it, I don't think it'll be nearly as interesting. Erin, can you tell us a little bit more about how you decide what you can break down and how you're breaking it down? Yeah, I think you can, I would say you can break down like just about anything. Um, a lot of times I'll just pull it apart. Like first, when I when I took apart this coxcomb, I first tried to see if I could just like peel it, but it wasn't it wasn't coming. It was like very much in. It's very much all together. It kind of looks like you can peel it off in sections, but it's actually all very much connected. And so the way that I did this is I kind of just went in with my scissors. See if I can get you a good view of this. Um, I'm kind of just going in, finding an end, and just cutting a piece out. So that's me just like cutting a piece. Um, there are certain things that, where like this celosia, for example, this is the same, this is, the coxcomb is also celosia, it's just a different type. This, for example, like these are all, I'm not gonna use this whole piece, but I can kind of break pieces off of it and use these pieces and maybe shorten them up. So I feel like each plant is like, is very, very different. And you kind of just have to play around with it. Um, sometimes like with this carnation, for example, it had a, a base on the bottom. And in order for me to remove the petals, I just had to remove the entire base of it. And that way it kind of released all the petals. So I feel like there's not, there's not necessarily one way, um, but I can give you an example of like, let's see, like a larger leaf, for example. Like, let's say I want, say I really want this color green in it, but it's a massive leaf and it's just gonna over, it's like bigger than my entire wrist corsage because my wrist corsage right now is like fairly dainty. I can literally just cut this down. Um, and now I've just made like a teeny leaf. And up close, like you might be able to tell that that's, that I did that, but like when it's mixed with all these other things, um, yeah, it's like, you really won't be able to tell. And it like, so if you have, if you're working with a set amount of material and you're feeling stuck and you're like, oh, like everything feels like bulky and clunky and I want it to be textured, like just think about kind of manipulating it. So let's see, I, I think I'm done here. Oh, I said I was, oh, I added one little, I added a piece of kukura flower right here. But yeah, I think that's it. Um, so this is gonna be, I'm not gonna be able to tie this on my wrist myself, but the idea is that it would be tied here. Um, some people like, the tails hanging down, it kind of like goes with their outfit. Some people want them cut really short. You can just make the decision. Usually if I'm going somewhere and I'm delivering this, this to someone, I'll just have a pair of fabric scissors with me. And this is for yourself. Um, obviously just do whatever you would like. And then I just wanna, um, I just wanna say that this same technique can literally be applied to like all jewelry. So I have this, well, first, are there any, if you guys have any questions about that process so far, feel free, feel free to put them in the chat and Elizabeth will pass them along. Um, yeah, I know people are definitely excited to hear a little bit about presentation, uh, not presentation, preservation. The care, uh, yes, preservation that's huge. Preservation and care. Okay, so first, well, if we want to do that first, we can. We can we could swap up the order. Um, so yeah, we'll do that next, and then I'll talk about all the different ways that you can apply this technique to different um, flats. Someone says is the is the ribbon stretchy? This one, no, it's a silk, so like has a little bit of give to it. Um, it's not a woven. I mean, it's not a knit, so it doesn't have a lot of stretch. But um, yeah, I feel like if it was stretchy, it it could it could be somewhat problematic. 
Um, but yeah, so how to take care of this? So these are not in water anymore and they're going to want to die. And I think I steered away from a lot of this work originally because of that. And what I learned was that just water and a, a paper towel and a sealed container literally does wonders. And so what I'm gonna do is to preserve this, I'm going to take water and you wouldn't really wanna make this, like the earliest I would make this is two days before it was intended to be worn. And this is not the type of thing where you're getting like a week out of it. Like it's not like a flower arrangement that lasts up to a week or something. This is something that will last probably about eight hours um, out of water. Some things, obviously, if they're hardier things, they'll last longer. But usually I would say like you'll be safe with like an eight hour long day. Um, so what I would do is when I finish this piece, I spray this down with water. And then I come and I take, um, it, this could be if you're a professional and you have like boot boxes and you're like delivering stuff in, in professional boxes, that's totally fine. But honestly, like anything that seals totally works. I have a million of these um, like to go container things. So I, I usually just use these. And so what I would do is I take a layer of paper towel. It's kind of similar to like the way you wrap herbs. And I spray this down and I get it like pretty wet. I would, I guess damp would be the word. It's not like sopping wet. So it's just like, it's damp. And then I place the item and I'll actually leave the ribbons out. I'll probably just like, so that the ribbons don't get wet too. Um, and then I'll spray this again. And then I'll take another layer of paper towel. In this case, I actually have just extra because the paper towel was big enough. And I'll just fold this over and I'll spray that down again. So right now it's like in a paper towel sandwich and it's the paper towel has been sprayed and it's damp and the flowers have been sprayed and they're damp. And, um, and I will also just spray the top for good measure for a little bit more moisture and I'll close this and I will put it in the fridge and I cannot tell you the miracle that this does it's crazy like I have flowers that I think are dying and like I shouldn't even use in a wrist corsage but like that's all I have like that's all I have left and like the next day the moisture will be taken up like by the petals and this will be so plumped and firm and it'll feel actually way better than it even does right now where it's just been drinking in water um so yeah this this is like it's such an easy method and i've seen so many people at events like i'll attend a wedding and i see people's like boutonnieres like dying halfway through the event or wrist corsages or necklaces or anything i just see them dying through the event and like this always works it's crazy and you do want to put it in the fridge if it's if it's not in the fridge it's just going to be like too humid and like I, I don't know i think weird things would happen if you didn't put it in the fridge but usually this is small enough that you can just stick it in the fridge like i said i would i would personally on a on a rule i would only leave this in the fridge for like two days before i wore it i know certain things can stay in the fridge a lot longer but because i put so many different things in this wrist corsage it's just it's just going to be better for me to keep it simple. If I'm delivering this, um, so you might have heard of like fish finishing sprays, like things like Crowning Glory. And I know some people use finishing sprays for their work. And what Crowning Glory does is it holds in moisture. So personally, like if I were to just made this and put Crowning Glory on it and stuck it in the fridge, like I don't actually find that that does that great of a job. To me, it doesn't come out like nearly as nice as just water. But what I might do is if, let's say I have to deliver um, a boutonniere or a wrist corsage to a client in the middle of the day and like they're not going to have a fridge to put it in, but they're not going to be wearing it till like five o'clock. After it's already been in the fridge and moist and like I take it out and it looks great and it's super plump, then I may finish it with like the crowning glory because that basically traps the moisture in. To be honest, like 99% of the time, I do not use that. So I don't think it's something that you need. But if you're really worried, let's say it's like 
in the middle of summer and you're like, everything just wants to die, the crowning glory could potentially help as a finishing spray. Um, so yeah, it's like, I would urge you all, like, even if you didn't follow along today, I would urge you to just take a couple flowers. Like I even do this with cake flowers. So today I have a wedding actually after this and I have all these cake flowers that are meant for the cake. And instead of, and what I've done actually is I've just cut all the flowers down. I've broken them all down. I put them in a big Tupperware with the same method, paper towel, spray it, flowers, spray it, paper towel, spray it seal the lid, put it in the fridge. Um, and now when I go to put these flowers on the cake later today, they're gonna be like nice and happy and healthy and just like super hydrated. It, it literally like blows my mind every time when, when they come out. Um, so yeah, it's just water, water, paper towels, sealed container. That's it, simple. Erin, after people have worn their floral wearables, have you had any success with drying them for longer term preservation? Ooh, I have never tried. Um, I wonder, yeah, maybe. I feel like it probably depends on what's in it. Cause I know some things when they dry, they kind of just get flaky or they lose their color. Um, or I know like this, plants that I put in it like this this begonia leaf like I don't think that's going to dry really well I so I really think it's probably dependent on the material that you put in it but I like the idea and you could always be intentional about what you put in it so that it can be dry after and speaking of dried product I will say like you can do this all with dried product you can use the glue with dried product you have to just be a little bit more careful dried product is just going to be more frail um but you can use the glue with dry product just the same. And, and, and some other ways that you can use it too. I just, this is like, um, so this is from a milk cap, you know, like when you open a carton of milk and you have this. So this could just be like a really basic like ring. Um, but so in this case, I would probably like cover it with a circle of felt, add flowers to it. And now I have like a floral ring. Basically any blank is what I'm getting at. Any blank will work. So this is like a blank cuff, um, felt or something porous, add the flowers and now you have that. You can do it with earring blanks. You can do it with necklace blanks. Um, you can get really creative with the types of things that you put these on. You can even do like, um, I thought I had, yeah. Like I have this little comb here, I think, they had like a, they had a little ribbon rose on it. I just cut that off. And basically on this plastic, I would add a little piece of felt, add the flowers, and now you have a hair comb. You can do the same thing with um, bobby pins. You can just like sandwich two pieces of felt at the end of it so that you have like a little platform to work on and add a couple flowers. So you can just like make sure, even if you just put one flower in, in your hair, it'll actually stay. And so those are some other ways that you could potentially use this Maybe same technique. Erin, do you ever use um, floral adhesive when you're making boutonnieres or use floral adhesive as the primary method for a boutonniere? Um, no. No, unless it was like something like unique, if it was like a certain shape and I needed it to go a certain way, potentially, I don't really use them for boutonnieres. Um, but I do use the hydration method for, for boutonnieres. Anything that's going to be out of water, I actually did um, welcome sign flowers. Usually I try to do those on site. So it's like the last thing I do because so, they're out of water and they're on a sign and I want them to look really fresh. And I actually did the same hydration method where like I took a big plastic bag that's used to like, it's I, I use it to cover my sourdough bread when it's, so it creates like a little warm chamber. And I basically like took this big plastic bag, put a damp paper towel in it, put the welcome um, sign flowers, which is kind of like a big piece, probably like this big that I made sprayed it, put the paper towel on top, and then I just like rolled the plastic bag shut and stapled it together and put that in the fridge. And like now I know all of those, like I don't have a lot of time to install on site today. So I just know those are gonna be like super happy and I don't have to worry about them and they'll last really well out of water. With boutonnieres, I think 
Elizabeth and I were actually talking before this class, and I think we're going to do like focus on wiring, um, a wiring class in the spring. With boutonnieres, I do sometimes I just use stem tape, um, and it's as simple as that. But a lot of things, just because I don't want it to be bulky on the wearer, I don't want them to really feel it. I want them to just like be moving around as though it's not on them. A lot of times, I will wire things individually. So I think we're going to do a class in the spring focused on like stem tape and wiring. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, we will cover it. I really want to wear this now because I actually am, I'm really into it and like trying to finagle this onto my wrist. Erin, what advice would you have for a hobbyist who is interested in getting involved in professional floral design work? Um, I guess I get this question a lot. Um, I, I always answer it to like basically what I did. So, because that's the only experience I have, but I think that like freelancing will teach you a lot. If you're into the hobby and you just kind of want to be thrown into a lot of different things, I think freelancing for a person who's already doing weddings will just expose you to um, what that actually consists of actually it'll also just help you know if you really want to do that because there are a lot of things like just because you love it as a hobby there are a lot of other things that you might not think about and so to be able to experience like the prep the pace the speed everything it entails the logistics the way to pack things because there's like the flowers is one thing which is probably one thing you'll be able to do really well and learn on your own but i think with the logistics of executing the event um I think just freelancing on a few wedding jobs will teach you a lot. And if you can freelance for a few different florists, because everyone just does things differently. And so being able to kind of see those methods and then kind of see how you want to approach the practice and then like do one of your friend's weddings or something. And there's so many people, there's a podcast called the flower podcast. And um, there is, there are so many people, they start out by saying like how they got into flowers and so many people are like, I did a wedding for my friend. And then like someone else asked and someone else asked, like take pictures of your work so people can see it. And um, hopefully I'll just grow naturally from there. But yeah, definitely I would freelance if you, if you can. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Erin. That concludes today's program.